Well, welcome to the Botanical Medicine Study Course with me, your host and instructor for the online class in all things botanical medicine. If you would like to be the first on your blog to know most of what is available in terms of practice, science, and application of botanical medicine, clink below, which is the combo word for click and link, and you will be directed to a form which has the information on how to download the introductory video and handouts for the class. A special thanks to new subscribers and all of you who comment, like, and share these videos. It really does help to spread the word. Well, it seems as if the dog days of summer are simply going to be a very uncomfortable reality for the foreseeable future. And I just learned the reason why they're called the dog days of summer is the constellation of Sirius apparently is more visible during this time. And Sirius is the dog constellation. So that's why they call it that. I think most of us feel the dog days of summer, just we all feel like dogs lying on the ground panting because they're so hot. So I do hope you're having some fun in the cooler parts of the day here in southwestern Bulgaria. The flowers are still coming and this week's herb of the week is gracing the meadows and hillsides around where I am living. And it's St. John's Wort. This herb was the quite the it herb in the 1990s <clears throat> and is consistently in the top 10 best selling herbal supplements in North America and Europe. Now, like all of nature's gifts, there is quite a bit to this beautiful herb. So let's explore St. John's word or Hypericum perforatum as the botanists like to call it. Historically, St. John's word has been used for a variety of conditions, including kidney and lung ailments, insomnia, and depression. In addition, the primary use of this herb was aiding in wound healing. And in the season of this outdoor activities, at least in the morning, St. John's wort can be a valuable ally in the bumps, scrapes, and muscle strains of summer. Now, oh, St. John's wort is a plant with yellow flowers that has been used in traditional European medicine as far back as the ancient Greeks. Actually, the Illyrians, which according to them, modern Albanians, they predate the Greeks in terms of civilization and were using this herb on the battlefield to heal the wounds of war. Now in the West, the same name St. John's Ward apparently refers to John the Baptist as the plant blooms around the time of the feast of St. John's the Baptist in late June. Now, one way to interpret this is the beautiful flowers look like sunbursts and uh, St. John's uh, festival is the 24th of June. And so this is close to the solstice and the sun is at its peak and the days are the longest. Um, so there's one reason why they think that's St. John's. Um, the other is a little bit morbid because for those of us familiar with the story of John the Baptist, he was beheaded. And when you place the flowers of, in oil and let them steep, the oil turns red. So I'm not sure why either the blooms are yellow and emerge around St. John's Day or the red color of the oil is the reason for the name. I'll leave that up to you. You can do some research and get back to me on that. Now in total, the Hypericum family includes over 400 species. It has its own family and the subspecies of the family, Hypericum perforatum, is essentially the only one that qualifies as a medicinal plant. And this plant grows on roadsides, embankments, forest margins, and dry grasslands. And uh, its cultivation in uh, medieval herb gardens has a long tradition. And uh, possibly this plant is a hybrid between Hypericum maculatum and a Hypericum attenuatum. 
and the species is found across temperate areas of Europe and Eurasia. Hypericum perforatum is a perennial plant with creeping rhizomes, and its reddish stems are erect and branched in the upper section and can grow up to one meter or three feet high. And the stems are woody near the base and may appear jointed from leaf scars. And the leaves are a yellow green in color with scattered translucent dots and the flowers range up to two and a half centimeters or an inch across, and they have five petals and five sepals. And as you can see here, they're very bright yellow, and the flowers actually have little black dots on them. Now, uh, because I'm a history buff, I just love the history of the use of these plants. And as I said before, the Hypericum family has 400 species and the subspecies of Hypericum perforatum is the only one that qualifies as a medicinal plant. And the cultivation of this in medieval herb gardens has a very long tradition. Now, the oldest preserved book documenting the monastic medicine is an 8th century Lorscher Arzenebuch, and it recommends St. John's wort benefits for addressing melancholy. And the term melancholy refers to gloom, despair, or depression. And um, it's really interesting that people were depressed in the Middle Ages. And sometimes when you look at how people were living back then, you could see why. They were depressed. Um, there's other uh, books that um, recommend that for these uh, melancholy, but also to accelerate the healing of wounds, to help treat the symptoms of gout and help men menstrual cramps. Apparently medieval women had menstrual cramps and mild arthritic pain. Now Paracelsus, he's the famous alchemist and basically all around rebel he's from Switzerland and lived in the 16th century, um, wrote several treatises on medicine and some uh, historians and medical historians consider his research and understanding of botanical medicine to be the foundation for modern chemistry as well as homeopathy. And he considered St. John's wort a universal medicine and his advice focused using St. John's wort on evil spirits and negative fantasies, uh, which was uh, basically a 16th century explanation of depression. Now, specifically, he noted a strong link between the conditions of the mind and the presence of inner demons. Now, uh, a uh, 19th century uh, German naturopath named Sebastian Niep, and that's K-N-E-I-P-P. -P. And for those of you who like very high quality um, personal bath and skin products. There's stores by this name, Neep, and they makes wonderful uh, massage oils and bath oils and, and soaps and hand creams. Anyways, it's based on the work of Sebastian Neep, and he lived between 1821 and 1897, and he used St. John's wort to treat psychological stress and fatigue. And he also swore by the herbs oil, known to help with healing wounds, burns, ulcers, gout, and rheumatism. Now, there are actually numerous things that St. John's wort does. Uh, most of the modern use is, is focusing on an anti-depression um, uh, qualities. But uh, St. John's wort has numerous ones. It's anti-inflammatory, astringent, vulnerary, nerving, antimicrobial. 
Now, currently, St. John's wort is promoted for depression and use in uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, menopausal symptoms, which for those women who suffer through this period of life, there's a lot of emotional and mental issues that are involved. Um, some women experience great um, anxiety, depression, irritability, things like that. And they're also used for different issues like obsessive compulsive disorder, somatic symptom disorder, which is a fancy word for hypochondriac. Now the topical use, um, it's used for various skin conditions, including wounds, bruises, and muscle pain. Now, the chemical constituents of St. John's wort, there are several classes of compounds, which means there's classes, but there's all kinds of chemicals that make up these classes. And the two that you're seeing here are the ones that are most focused on, but know that they're part of a great big family of chemical constituents. They're called naphthodianthones, acyloproglucanols, proansinidins, flavonoid glycosides, polyphenol propanes, and bioflavonoids. But the two, hyperacin and hyperaphin, are the ones that uh, basically act most actively on the nervous system. Now, if you hear the word psyche or in things like psychology or psychologist or psychiatrist, psyche is actually the word for soul. It's a Latin word for soul. But um, psyche, anything to do with psychoactive medication, psychiatry, psychology, all of these things in, um, have what you see on the screen here. It's called a synaptic cleft. And you have literally trillions of these in your body, just trillions of them. And they're in your brain and all throughout your spinal cord and every single nerve has a whole bunch of these things. And the synaptic cleft is the area between nerve cells where big communication takes place specifically in the brain. And neurotransmitters are the chemicals that travel across the nerves and the synaptic cleft affecting all sorts of things, how you move bodily functions and how you think and your moods. This is how modern science views these things. And a substance called MAO, which is an enzyme called monoamine oxidase, is involved in removing transmitters such as norepinephrine, serotonin, and dopamine from the brain. And all of these neurotransmitters are things that essentially help us get up in the morning, do things, and feel happy and pleasure. Now, why would you want an enzyme to remove those things, right? But you can't have too much. The body, you always have to think, I don't even know if this story is relevant anymore. Goldilocks and the three bears, you know, everything had to be just so for Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, just right. Um, the body is really a Goldilocks, it's just really Goldilocks. And too much or too little is not a good thing. And MAO stops the too much. It stops the too much. Now, sometimes MAO does too much of a good thing and you don't have enough of stuff. So obviously in depression, people do not want to get to do anything. They just don't want to do anything. They're not happy and they do not feel pleasure. And it doesn't matter what their surroundings are like. They just don't feel like doing anything. And while depression involves many things, um, how it is understood in terms of brain chemistry and nerves 
is how many neurotransmitters you have and whether or not they're able to cross the synaptic cleft. And MAO inhibitors uh, is, was the first class of drugs developed to combat depression. And MAO inhibitors or MAOIs prevent MAO enzyme from eating up the happy neurotransmitters. Hence the word inhibitor, which makes more of these brain chemicals available to affect changes both in cells and circuits that have been impacted by depression. So some studies suggest that St. John's wort, wort acts similar in a manner to the MAO inhibitors. And these studies were used as proof that St. John's wort helps depression and voila, a best-selling herb because everyone is very depressed these days and does not want to A, take drugs that may have side effects and B, not look at the underlying reasons for their situational depression, which plagues most of us, including yours truly. Depression is a complex and in many cases, pharmaceuticals can be life-saving. But it's good to look at diet, exercise, and participate with a trained clinician in talk therapy. And if you look at many of the in-house programs currently, current in-house programs for treating depression, they do all of that. You have exercise classes and yoga and you're eating a very healthy diet and you're taking your medication and you're also getting talk therapy. Usually it's individual and group. And that is a really good way to treat depression. But most people can't afford these or they simply don't want to do that. And life is difficult and often heartbreaking. And there's many ways to help with what I consider a rational reaction to many of the sorrows involved with living. Sometimes I say to my clients who are dealing with depression, did it ever occur to you that you're having a rational reaction to a really horrible situation? You know, maybe look at it that way. And um, so the problem I have with using St. John's wort for depression is that it's used like a pharmaceutical as a band-aid and not always treating the deeper cause. And also St. John's wort is a nerving and it's really more for treating wounds and nerve pains. Um, it's really, even though historically it's been used for certain depressions, it really has a wider use in treating wounds. So to make sure that this video is not taken down by the YouTube police, or I am blamed for something terrible that happens to my viewers, which I am actually more concerned about, to be honest. I care about everyone's well-being, and I don't want anything that I am saying to be a reason why you would be harmed. So <clears throat> I want everybody to be well. There are cautions involved with St. John's Ward, especially when it's taken internally. Now, topically for healing bruises and pain from trauma, there does not seem to be the issues as there are with internal use. And in research studies, taking St. John's wort by mouth for up to 12 weeks has been seen to be safe. Um, but if you are still depressed after 12 weeks, you really need, you need help. And please seek it. But because St. John's wort interacts with many drugs, it might not be safe for people, especially those who are taking prescription and conventional medications. And taking St. John's wort with certain antidepressants or other drugs that affect serotonin may lead to uh, serotonin-related side effects, which may be potentially serious. And St. John's wort may uh, cause increased sensitivity to sunlight, especially if you take it in large doses. And other side effects can include insomnia, uh, anxiety, dry mouth, dizziness, stomach issues, fatigue, headache, and of course, the big bugaboo that nobody wants to have happen is sexual dysfunction. 
So make sure you know what you're doing <clears throat> with this drug, uh, this herb actually. Now, St. John's wort can weaken the effects of many medications, including crucially important medicines such as antidepressants, birth control pills, cyclosporine, which you take if you're getting an organ transplant, uh, heart medications, including digoxin, some HIV drugs, uh, cancer medications, warfarin, which is an anticoagulant or a blood thinner. And people are put on that after they have heart attacks and strokes. And note that the leading cause of death after a heart attack, particularly in women, is depression, which causes a second heart attack. So if you've had a heart attack, you need to talk with your physician and get some sort of treatment, talk therapy, whatever, for uh, depression, because depression will lead to a second heart attack. And if you're taking warfarin after a heart attack to make sure you don't have another one and you're taking St. John's wort, it's going to decrease the effectiveness of that drug and it's it gonna it may uh, risk you to a second heart attack. So please, please be careful. And certain statins, which are cholesterol drugs, drugs. So if you remember that lovely image of that synaptic cleft, most pharmaceuticals work on this cleft. So this is why many drugs can be potentiated or nullified by taking St. John's Ward. So for all of our sakes, especially yours, if you are on any sort of medication, especially if you're on an immune drug, mood altering drug, heart medicine, blood thinners, cholesterol medication, birth control, you need to talk to your physician, pharmacist, and naturopath about taking St. John's wort internally. So does this mean you can't have the healing effects of St. John's wort if you have a heart condition, clinical depression, or on birth control? Never fear. Homeopathy is here. Homeopathy is a form of herbal medicine where minute doses, and we mean like one atom, one chemical are potentized energetically, which means they keep diluting and shaking and diluting and shaking and diluting and shaking and diluting and shaking. And, shaking. and um, so you're not taking any chemicals, but you are getting the healing energy of the substance. And it is so dilute that there are many uh, well-financed pharmaceutical interests that are lobbying to outlaw this because heaven forbid people buy a tube for six dollars that has nothing but sugar pellets in it heaven forbid um uh sarcasm sarcasm purposeful here so you also need to know that homeopathy does not interfere with the chemicals and the drugs in any way. And finally, you will come to understand why learning the Latin binomials of herbs is so important. Uh, homeopathic St. John's wort is sold as hypericum and is available in tinctures, creams, and pellet forms. So if you have some sort of nerve damage from an injury injury and are on birth control, blood pressure medicine, or an antidepressant, you can still get the help you need with Hypericum, which is a homeopathic St. John's wort. Now, if you want to do a really fun project with children, collect some St. John wort flowers and put them into a glass bottle with a carrier oil. I personally like grapeseed or almond, mainly because they are light, they have a pleasant odor, and are absorbed by the skin easily. But olive oil also works, it's nice. If you don't mind smelling like olive oil, go for it. The beautiful and delicate yellow St. John's wort flower will turn the oil a bright red. This is a sight to behold and defies logic, but after you strain the flowers out after a couple of weeks, the oil is an amazing first aid remedy 
and is great for muscle aches and pains. And you can also use this oil as a basis for making a salve. And there's a link in the program notes on how to make the oil and salve for your home first aid kit. Now, St. John's wort is really a quite beautiful plant. And as I said before, it's growing wild all over the place where I live, because I live on the edge of a forest. And I think it's worth growing in a garden, mainly for the flowers, which are so healing and they're really beautiful and they, they attract bees. Now, I have a link in the program notes on how you can do this. I also have a, another link to a really great company who sells medicinal herb seeds. Now, there are many ways to take St. John's wort, both internally and externally. And obviously, you can do that homeopathically, or you can do it with the bulk herb. And there's an essential oil, which you can put in a carrier oil or a few drops into a bath. You can take a tincture or you can get it powdered in capsule form. There are gel caps that have standardized extracts in them. And you can also drink a tea from the fresh or dried flowers. Externally, you can use a salve or an infused oil. I personally prescribe St. John's wort for recovery from surgery or after any sort of physical trauma. And both the uh, homeopathic remedy is wonderful for dental work. If you've had some pretty severe dental surgery, taking hypericum is really good for that. Um, and uh, also any type of surgery. And a little bit of personal history. I had some abdominal surgery uh, a while ago, which if anyone has had this, it is excruciatingly painful mainly because everything you can possibly imagine from breathing to standing to relieving yourself in the bathroom involves abdominal muscles. And I thought, because I'd never taken any sort of pain reliever, even aspirin or Tylenol, that uh, the prescribed pain relievers that the, the surgeon gave me would just knock me out. Well, let me tell you, I have no idea personally, why people get addicted to certain drugs, because the ones I was taking, Vicodin, which is the personal favorite of numerous celebrities and conservative radio talk show hosts, um, how they get addicted to this, because for me, it just, it didn't even touch the pain. It just made me itchy, constipated, which with abdominal surgery is really awful. And it's something nobody really tells you when you get that kind of surgery. You're, if you take these pain relievers, they make you constipated. They're, bait, they're opium derivatives, which essentially put your colon to sleep. And so if you're straining to have a bowel movement after abdominal surgery, let me tell you, it rivals childbirth in terms of pain. And, uh, I just was having these really bizarre and violent dreams. So after struggling for two days with constipation and abdominal incisions, I thought, forget this. I'm not being helped at all. And I can still hardly breathe. And these drugs are not working. So I got some St. John's wort oil and mixed a few other things in it um, and painted my incisions several times a day. And even though I do this for a living and I went to tons of school and I understand all the stuff around, I could not believe at how effective that was. It was hugely effective. And uh, so I can tell you from personal, personal history that it works really well as, as a topical, you know, around the wound and uh, for surgery, and also from very happy patients that have used this much to their delight. Now, I hope you wish to incorporate this amazing gift in any way you can imagine, from just enjoying it in nature, as an internal or external remedy in your garden, uh, or being able to impress people when you go on hikes. I know what that plant's good for. 
I hope you come to appreciate St. John's wort, Hypericum perforatum, and the contributions it has towards human health and wellness for the last several thousand years. So this is Stephanie Georgiev saying thanks for spending your valuable time with me. Clink below for an introductory lesson and make sure to check out other links for valuable information on all things St. John's Wort. So until next time, be well.